Now, we believe that it was used for burials, but also religious rituals and ceremonies for about three to four hundred years. And then at the end, or towards the end of the Stone Age, this site was abandoned. We're not really sure why, but the same thing happens with the other passage graves in the area, and it's suggesting maybe a change in the religious practices, with the way the people worship here. They go off to find new places to worship, and were abandoned for about five or six hundred years. Towards the very beginning of the Bronze Age, people return, but instead of using the tomb itself, they stay on the outside and they conduct whatever religious rituals and practices were happening here on the very outside. Those people are the people that put these large stones here. So with 12 remaining, originally there would have been a circle of 35 stones surrounding the mound of Newgrange. So it shows that in the Bronze Age, the people were marking maybe separating Newgrange from the outside world, marking it off as a special place. But like that, they just weren't going inside. We're not really sure what was happening here. We just have evidence of them being here for another few hundred years before once again going away. This time, they go away for quite a long time. We just revert back into a field. We're used as an agricultural site for three and a half thousand years. We're forgotten about basically. Uh, what happens is very, very quickly at the end of the Stone Age, beginning of the Bronze Age, this lovely white facade corpse collapses down, falls forward, and that allows the material behind to slip and fall forward and bury all of the stones. And the burials would have been in these kind of recesses here. So oh. we have these three right recesses. There's large stones on the floor, which have a little bit of a basin or a bowl shape to them. We presume that's where the burials were put, but nothing was actually found in them mm -hmm. because of all the disturbance done oh. here over the years. Um, they actually only found the remains of five people here during the excavations. There would have been a lot more because if you look at now, the eastern chamber at Knife had nearly 170 oh. people in it. It actually would have had more as well because it was, had some disturbance done. So you could have had 200 people in here easy enough. Mm -hmm. So it's just done by overlapping large stones on top of each other and it's built kind of like a beehive shape. Mm -hmm. That top stone there in the roof, the capstone, is about six metres above us. Oh, how not we allowed water in in 5,000 years? Wow. Which is an amazing feat considering this is Ireland. And it actually slipped so much that if you were here in the 1600s, you only would have seen the very top of these stones. Mm -hmm. So that's how much the mine slipped over time. It's why people kind of forgot what was here. It just turned into a grassy hill covered with trees and bushes. Now the locals knew something was on the site but they weren't sure what. And we didn't rediscover what was here until 1699. We were rediscovered by accident by a man by the name of Charles Campbell. He's from Scotland. 
he was granted all of the land here after the Battle of the Boyne. And the word is, or the story is, that he was doing up the roads in the area, cleaning out all the earth that had fallen into the passage. And they were then able to walk all the way down the passage and stand up in the chamber at the end. Hmm. They were probably the first people to do that in over 4,000 years. Hmm. So while the exterior structure had collapsed, the inside had stayed standing. It is still standing after 5,000 years. It's an amazing feat of engineering. Except if you wanted to visit here before the 1960s, you came directly to the site. You went to the farmer, gave him a penny, a shilling, he gave you the key and a candle and you let yourself in, <laughs> unsupervised. <laughs> now, you laugh at this, but unfortunately, because of this, quite a lot of damage was done to the inside. Mm. People went treasure hunting. Mm. They moved stones, they dug holes, they went looking for gold and silver, and they did a lot of damage to the chamber mm. on us. Mm -hmm. They also destroyed nearly, nearly every single burial mm. that was placed oh. inside there and stole a lot of things. We believe mm. there would have been a lot of grave goods in there, but they were mm. most of them were taken over the, the three, four hundred years that we were open. They also then wrote their names on nearly every surface that they could reach oh. inside. <laughs> we're covered in graffiti from the 17 and 1800s. Oh.